Jodi, Assistant Professor in NJ Institute of Engineering and Technology in Department of Electronics and Communication. This video is about subject Microwave Engineering. So, we are going to learn about the microwaves. Now, you know about what are the microwaves which we studied earlier. So now, from this video, you will learn about the various microwave active and passive devices. So very first, we are going to focus on to the microwave passive devices. Now as you know that, to study about the behavior of the microwave component, it is mandatory to have the idea about the S parameter. As we know that the A, B, C, D parameter, X parameter, Y parameter and the Z parameters are there. But to get the idea about the high frequency waves, it is mandatory to learn about the S parameter. S parameter in that the logical variable is the traveling wave. Traveling wave consists of the incident wave and the reflected wave. So a parameter set that relates to the traveling wave that are scattered or the reflected when the end port network is inserted into the transmission line. S parameter is important in the microwave designs because they are easier to measure. As we know that at the microwave frequency, it is difficult to store short circuit as well as the open circuit devices. So the, the measurement devices which we used at the lower frequency can't help here. So the two port network, okay, the two port parameters over here, you can see in the diagrams, the two port waves, okay, the A1 is the incident wave, B1 is the reflected wave, okay, and the source voltage is the Vs and at the lower end we have connected the load resistance, okay, or the impedance, okay, load impedance that is connected. So this way the S parameter that is important to have the idea about any two port network. Suppose I can show you that this is nothing but the microwave devices, okay. It is my the E plane T, okay. So what I am considering this the E plane T, this is my port number 1, it is my port number 2, this is my port number 3, okay. So what should I have? If I want to have the idea about the behavior of this particular the component, I need to have the idea about the S parameters, okay. So that is why we need to study about the S parameter, okay. Now the next is why S parameter? S parameter, okay. So now in the voltage and the current are difficult to define and measure in the distributed circuit. The incident and the reflected wave that are the natural description for the microwave structure. So conversion of the from the S parameter to other parameter that is the sex of the matter of the routine algebra. So here you can see that the device under test. So this is the device under test if I am putting over here. It is my port number one port number 2. So when I am passing my the input wave okay from the port number 1, what I need to use? I need to use this is what? It's my the match load. So if I am connecting my match load over here, okay, this match load over here, okay. So what I have? I have by connecting the match load here. Now whatever I am applying from this port, it will come out from this port. There is nothing at this port. Similarly, if I am connecting my match load over here, what do I have? I have the match load at here. If I am applying the input from this port, I have output from this port. Okay. So you can see over here. So over here, it is what? So this is my device under test. If I want to find out the behavior of my 
this component, okay, I should have the idea about what that's a S parameter you can see over here. Okay, so the main thing about the S parameter, they are measured by sending the single frequency signal into a network or a black box for detecting the waves exits from the each port. Okay, power, voltage, current can be considered in the form of the traveling wave. Okay, and I as I have shown, we are applying the input from the port number one. Okay, we have the output from the all other ports. So now you can see in this diagram that is the device under the test. Port 1, the incident wave, it is applied and what you have, you have the output at the port number 2. Okay, now what happened? While you were transmitting the input signal from the port number 1, okay, what happened? That sometimes if I am considering it's my two port network, what I am doing? I am connecting it with the match load. Okay, so now what happened? My this port that is closed. So, I am applying the input from this particular port 1. So, what happened? That the some line you are applying the input from the port number 1, you have the output at the port number 2. But part of the sum wave which is reflected back at the port number 1. So, now this kind of the consideration that we have to, we want to know. And again, it is important to get the uh, knowledge about the S parameter. Okay, so this is the another diagram that you can see. It is my A1 is my incident wave, the B1 is my reflected wave from the port number 1. A2 is, suppose I am connecting the match load at the port 1. What I have? I am applying the input from the port number 2. So from the port number 2, my wave is. A2, my reflected wave from the port number 2 is B2. Fine. So this way we can we can understand, we can give us idea about the any particular the component. So now to get the idea about all this kind of the two port network, we can describe the relations, linear relationship between the two port network by writing this equation. It is V1 is equal to, V1 is the reflected wave from the port number 1. So V1 is equal to what? So it is the X11A1 plus S12A2 and the B2, it is the reflected wave from the port number 2, B2 is equal to S21A1 plus S22A2. Fine. So this way you can describe the equation, okay, and we can get the idea of the behavior of any microwave component. So S11, S12, S21, S22, what are that? So there are the microwave parameters, S parameters, okay. So here in this diagram, you can see that a1 is the incident wave, B1 is the reflected wave from the port number 1, A2 is the incident wave from the port number 2, B2 is what? The reflected wave from the port number 2. Okay, so which parameter we want to find out? We want to find out S11. Mean what happened while you are applying the input from the port number 1? And at the port number 1, what could be the output, okay? So, I want to have the idea about my reflected wave, my incident wave. So, the reflected wave divided by the incident wave or you can say that the ratio of the reflected wave to the incident wave is nothing but it's over the S parameter. So, now the one by one in the equation, okay, I can find it out my S11. S11, okay, that is the B1 upon A1, okay, from the relationship B1 is equal to S11 A1 plus S12 A2. So now here, if you, if it is my, the two port network, fine, it is my two port network. What I can do, that if I want to find out the S11, it is mandatory to connect the match load at the other terminal. Okay, so now what happened? You are applying the input from this port. 
Okay, here the match load is there. So what happened? Your input will not propagate through this port and it is reflected back from this port. So while you are applying the input from the A1, making this A2 is equal to 0 and what could be the output at the B1 that is my reflected wave. Okay, so I can say that the S11 is equal to B1 upon A1 by A2 is 0. A2 is 0 mean you are not putting that S A2 0 value. But while you are connecting the it with the match load, okay? What I have? The match load. And by connecting with the any port, my value, okay, I am considering equal to zero means my impedance, okay, that I am trying to match, okay? So this way, the S22 parameter you can also find out. So it is the B2 upon A2. Now B2 upon A2, this is what? Port number, port number 1, port number 2. Fine. Now port number 1 is connected with what? With the match load. So now what happened? You are applying the input from here. Okay. Input from here. It is connected with this match load. So this value that we are considering it's a 0. So while you are applying the input from here, the wave which is traveling and which will be come back to this particular port, okay? So it is what the S22, while A2 is connected with the match load, applying the incident wave from the port number 2, what is the output at the port number 2? So this way you can have the idea about the other parameter, okay? So this is, I think, is clear to everyone about S11 and S22. The other parameter is S21. S21, okay? It is what? B2 upon A1, where A2 is equal to 0, okay? So, this is the A2 is 0 when port number 2 is connected with the match termination. While port number 2 is connected with the match termination, applying the input from the port number 1, that is the A1, what is the output, okay, the reflected wave at the port number 2. So, it is known as the forward transmission, okay, and the insertion gain with the output port terminated in a match load. S12 is equal to B1 upon A2, while A1 is 0. Reverse transmission, it's an insertion gain with the input port terminated to a match load. So this way, these are the basics for finding out the or behavior of any microwave component. Okay, so if the network is changed, the S parameter is changed. Okay, so not the S parameter remains same for all the components. So, if the network is changed, S parameter is changed. If the transmission frequency is changed, network S parameter is changed. If the load impedance is changed, network parameter that change. And if the source impedance change, the S parameter that okay change. So this way you can have the idea about this. Properties of the S matrix is again important while you are deriving the S parameter for any particular component. So it is S is always the square matrix, okay? Then what is about the square matrix? If I am having this component, how many ports are there? Port number 1, port number 2, port number 3. So its matrix for this component is 3 by 3 matrix. Suppose I am having this component, fine, it is my magic T, okay. So magic T, okay, you can see this component, how many ports are there? Port number 1, port number 2, port number 3, port number 4. So this matrix, the matrix for this component is 4 by 4 matrix, okay. So the number of ports, okay, according to that, the matrix that we have. The S is an unitary matrix, mean the 
S parameter of the one matrix, okay, and the complex conjugate of that, it gives you the identity matrix, okay. So this is what it is again the uh, property of this. And the phase shift property, that's again the another property, okay, for the S parameter. That if you are changing the any uh, any plane, okay, from the uh, port one side, port two side, the you have the phase shift. Now here are the for example the S parameters are given for the few components, okay. So you can see that first in the first example, transmission line is there. Having the port number 1 and port number 2. Fine. So the impedance, characteristics impedance is that 0. So by considering the equations, we can have the S parameter for that transmission line is this. This is the short. Okay. Is the matching short. This way we have. Then the, for that, the uh, uh, S parameter is this. And the amplifier, the S parameter value is this. So this way we can have the idea about the S parameter for any of the component. So now here we have a circulator. We have a circulator. S parameter is this. Isolator S parameter is this. Okay. So now we are going to forward about the microwave hybrid circuit. What is the microwave hybrid circuit? So now that consists of the microwave devices. They are connecting with each other, okay, to achieve the desired transmission, okay. The interconnection of two or microwave devices, okay, that may be regarded as a microwave junction. So you now you can see that this is my one component. What I want to do? That I want to connect with the other component. Fine. Similarly, the other component you are connecting. So you are establishing the microwave junction. Okay. So this microwave junction. Okay. How it used. Okay. So now we have the waveguide T's. Okay. So now we will learn about the waveguide T's. In that we will learn about E plane T, H plane T, magic T, hybrid ring T, or the other name is the red rest circuit. Okay. So now we will move forward to learn about the waveguide T as well as the other components, directional coupler, power divider. Uh, circulator, isolator, okay, waveguide twist, okay, uh, waveguide band. So these all are the microwave passive component. Now we will learn about the T, okay, H plane T, E plane T, then the magic T, hybrid ring, corners, okay, then after the various bands, okay, the twist as I said, okay. So here I'll show you, this is my H plane T, okay, this is my H plane T, fine. Now I'll show you, this is my E plane T, okay, this is H plane T, okay, and it is the E plane T, fine. And what is it? This is the magic T, which is the combination of the E plane T and the H plane T. Okay, so now we will learn in detail about the E plane T. So now here you can see that this is what it is my the E plane T. Okay, now you can consider this diagram. Okay, over here. Okay, so it is my E plane T. Okay, so you can see that this is what it is my port number one. Then it is the port number 2 and port number 3. Okay. Now in this the disarm. Okay. For the port number this. Okay. It is known as the collinear arm. And this arm which is considered to be as a side arm. Okay. So collinear arm and the side arm. It is E20. It is also known as the series T. Okay. A waveguide T in which 
the axis of the side arm okay you can see over here that wherever the e arm is written okay this is, is known as the side arm and it is my collinear arm so wave band t in which the axis of the side arm is parallel to the e field of the main guide okay now here another way i have draw uh, the diagram representation of the e plant is given port number 1 port number 2 and port number 3 okay so now we have to have the idea about so if the collinear arm are symmetric about the side arm there are different transmission characteristics one is the input arm another one is the input side arm now here you can have the idea about it port number 1 port number 2 port number 3 now if you are applying the input from the port number 1 okay what happen that port number 1 and port number 2 are 180 degree phase shift is there so if you are applying the input from the port number 1 the output available at the port number 2 it is 180 degree uh, phase shift okay and at the port number 3 okay we can have the output of both fine again in the second diagram if you are applying the port number uh, input okay from the port number 3 okay what we have we have the output okay at the port number 1 and the port number 2 but they are 180 degree phase shift of each other okay so now here i will i will show you that while you are applying the input from the port number 1 okay port number 1 fine so what you have you have the output at the port number 2 and port number 3 fine now at the port number 1 while you are applying the input at the port number 2 it is 180 degree phase shift over here we are getting the output that is the uh, uh, summation of the port number 1 and the port number 2 okay so this way we can have the idea about the uh, uh, e plant now matrix of e plant fine as i said that k there are the three ports so how many uh, my, 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 uh, matrix n by n matrix 3 by 3 so element is s11 s12 s13 s21 s22 s23 S three one, S three two, S three three. Now I know the behavior of my the circuit. So I I want to write about the my scattering coefficients value. Okay, and what I say that K I find the S one three and S two three are the out of phase by the one eighty degree with the input port at port number three. The meaning of the S one three mean what? you are applying the input at the port number 3 what is the output okay at the uh, port number 1 if you are applying the input at the port number 3 what is the output at the port number 2 so that is my s13 and s23 as i said that i am applying the input from the port number 3 what i have the x13 and s23 so they are 180 degree phase phase shift okay so the value for that component is s23 is equal to minus x13 okay now if the port is perfectly matched to the junction mean if my port 3 that is perfectly connected with the match load and i am applying the input from the port number 3 okay so there is no output at the port number 3 okay so you what you may say that okay my diagonal elements okay that is what so that's zero so s3 3 is equal to zero okay now we know about the symmetry property of the s matrix okay that is s i j is equal to s j i so here in the equation 4 it is mentioned x 1 2 is equal to s 2 1 s 2 3 is equal to s 3 2 s 1 3 is equal to s 3 1 so now in the equation 5 we are putting all the values in the equation it is the s 1 1 s 1 2 s 1 3 now what is the s21 according to the 
symmetric property s21 is equal to s12 so here i have written instead of the s21 it is the s12 s22 my uh, x23 is what so according to this equation 2 s23 is minus s13 so we are putting that value in the equation minus s13 s31 is s13 okay s32 is equal to s13 minus s13 and what is the s33 it is zero why zero because you are applying the input okay from the port number 3 okay as you know that fine that 180 degree phase shift of each other okay so what could the be the output at the port number 3 it's nothing but it's zero so you here we are putting that value it is is equal to zero so now according to the unitary property you can also see over here what is it s into complex conjugate of that matrix it is equal to the identity matrix okay so now we are taking the we are solving this matrix okay so now how can you solve it is my r1 c1 mean my row number 1 and the column number 1 equating it with the first element of my this unitary matrix so what do i have i have r1 with s11 okay c1 it's a complex conjugate of s11 so s11 into the complex conjugate of s11 it's a modulus of the s11 square okay similarly s12 s12 star okay so s12 into s12 star if you are comparing that with the other element it's zero so you can see that only wherever the diagonal elements that are the one for that we have all the equations okay so by solving this okay we can have all these equations and we are putting this all value inside the equations okay so by putting that value inside the equations we can have the e uh, e plane t value okay so here by equating the value s11 is equal to s12 okay from the equation a we can write 2s13 square so s13 is equal to 1 upon square root of 2 okay so now similarly the x11 is equal to 1/2 by solving the equations so we have all the values by putting the values inside the equations we can have the e plane t s matrix is this okay so when you are applying the input from the port number 1 the output available at the port number 1 is 1/2 okay so half of the power that you are getting okay so this way we are able to find out the relationship okay for the e plane t and you can have the idea about the behavior of the uh, e plane t so thank you very much everyone